That's right, episode 46 of the Rated RR Podcast. Rish Roshan Rai and Ziaul Raushan here and we are so delighted to have your company. Rosh, one more thing I'm very delighted about is the return of live football. How good is it to have the Singapore Premier League back in action? Hey, great man. Really, really great. Uh, delighted to be here on the show as always. And uh, I'm looking forward to what we'll be talking about with our guests a little bit later on. But yeah, look, return of, of Singapore Premier League and some great results over the weekend as well. I mean, the sides from the bottom four last season taking points away from a couple of teams in the in the top four from last season. So long may that competitiveness continue, Russia. A quick uh, stat attack there by Roshan already laying down the bottom four, top four. Rosh, always counting on you for the best. Speaking <laughs> of the Singapore Premier League, two guys who have yet to make their bows in the 2022 Singapore Premier League, but we're seeing plenty of them as the season goes along. Is Raihan Stewart and Ricky Kimura. Welcome to the show, boys. It's excellent to have you with us. You guys were recommended by Iksan to join us on the show and he casually said, it's the rated RRRR. I had to get that out of the way. It's a bit difficult. He said, there'll be plenty of good stuff coming from the both of you. So, what kind of relationship do you guys both have on the pitch? Ricky, perhaps I start with you. Uh, yeah, cool. Thanks for having us on the on the show. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, me and Ryan, I guess uh, we like met each other during our time at Warriors, Warriors FC. So, that was a very interesting time. So, like we, would, uh, uh, we came in and I guess he was just the person that I got along with the most. And I guess every time we just like hang out with each other and, you know, do a little bit of shooting, a little bit of shooting and he shoots at me and I save. And then afterwards, we just got really close through like um, from Warriors. Then we got close to Iksan and I was already close with Jacob from NFA. So like we all just kind of bonded together and we went on a lot of overseas trips. And like, I guess that's just where the friendship like grew. So mm. really close. Yeah, no pressure, guys. I'm hearing that there's a lot of interesting stories that you guys are going to be telling us. You know, Iksan was saying that you guys have got great stuff on each other, Raihan. What can you tell us about your relationship with Ricky? Yeah, I think me and Ricky, we got, we, we are close to each other because we both have the same, like, attitude. We used to come early to training. We have to be the first one there. And then also, like, I'm, I mean, honest, last one to leave as well. So we yeah. do, like, practice his goal kicks and practice um, shooting, yeah. So we just bonded there. And then as we went on, we just got closer, I guess, to the mm. rest of the group as well, like Jacob and Iksan. Yeah. And I think you guys have some kind of uh, clothing line as well that you guys have started together, yeah. the four of you. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. we had like, during COVID, like, you know, times, times are bad. So we had to like, we like <laughs> started to use Raihan's marketing skill from his diploma at TP. Yeah. Uh, and, I had to, and we like created a little online shop called No Cap Label. Like, I yeah. think we did pretty well. Like we, we sold some, we sold some decent brands and, and yeah, a little bit of profit in there. Cool. Is that is that is that still going on, Rahan? Oh no, the shop is um, <laughs> a bit on hiatus at the moment. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Good to know that. that. Good to Wait, know there's that. Another thing I wanted a... to, uh, there's another Sorry. thing I wanted to actually jump in here because you guys, I know, do a little bit of modeling as well. How's that coming along? Go on, Rahan. Oh, for me, it came along during COVID as well. Like yeah. um, during this modeling agency DM me and was like, we're interested in having me and my brother come in as their models. And so I was like, why not? Because I can earn a bit of pocket money on the side. And, you know, it was a good experience, you know, to go out there and model. And yeah, I think the ladies love it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to mention, yeah, his modeling, yeah, it's, it's not like the normal modeling. Like he's out here taking shirtless pics with like some weird weird things like if i i could show you some of the pictures that he, that he takes about modeling like with a like with shirtless with like a python and stuff like that wrapped yeah, around like, <laughs> like doing like this and all that uh ricky i just wanted to find out whether we talk about raihan's modeling have you dabbled into modeling any topless pics of yours that you want to share uh, mine's 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 the easy ones you know like just like face wash uh, like i got a little i got a job yesterday i think like some sort of thing <laughs> just simple ones uh you know just casual ones but like yeah, it's, yeah it's like it's like good money on the side and just uh brings out the portfolio a little bit so brilliant 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 i i, I gotta look into it man i i, I gotta <laughs> I think, look into I it i think i think you both should, should get it <laughs> so for those marketing people listening in the written rr doesn't mind doing stuff like that and yeah let us know all right enough of the fun stuff let's get stuck into the football shall we Raihan, stuck, starting with you do you think you found your position at right back is it is that where you feel most comfortable almost um yeah because like i've played everywhere if you think about it Yeah, so I played like center mid. I played on the wing. I played everywhere, like almost everywhere on the pitch, except like goalkeeper. And I think right back is where I 
believe I can like utilize all the skills that I have to the best uh, for the best for the team because you know I've got I've got pace I've got a uh, stamina and I think um, skill wise I'm also there for right back it, it's good for me so yeah probably right back's the best position for myself mm. and, um, yeah so I think I found my kind of position now yeah. yeah you know you know what's great about it as well is it seems like the fullback positions in football are becoming a lot more important, right? You look across the, the world game and it's sometimes in certain teams, for example, I think of Liverpool and you've got your fullbacks as your playmakers, almost. Uh, Raihan, I, I want to come back to you on this. What, what do you think are the kind of qualities that you need to succeed in that position? Yeah, I think modern fullbacks are becoming more and more attacking and mm. um, being more of a part of the attack. So I think for a modern fullback, you need to have the stamina to run up and run back and be able to, to join the attack when the team needs it. So you can overload the other team. So that's one thing you need. You need a good, like, uh, good, like, lungs and to, to keep mm-hmm. going up the field. Because, like, some, some games I'm going, like, 10, 11K a game mm-hmm. and, like, high, high speed distance of over, like, 1K. So, like, I'm sprinting, like, the most in the team, usually. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I think one of the, my main strength is my speed and my stamina for, for being a right back. Mm. Rick, Ricky, just coming to you with a similar sort of question. Roshan touched on it there, the evolution of positions, right? The goalkeeping position has evolved in time as well. And right now, we see a lot of uh, extra men. The goalkeeper is essentially the extra man in possession these days. So is that something you're comfortable with playing out of your feet? Uh, I mean, yeah, like, especially with the system that, like, Singapore is not trying to implement, especially with the mm. other as well. It's like mm. playing out the back. As well as the balance there right now, we're trying to play out the back as well. It's something that, I mean, I have to admit that it's something that I need to work on. Maybe I'm not like up there with, you know, I need to work on not up there like Hassan or Izwan, you know, uh, but, you know, I'm still young and it's something that I, I need to work on. And uh, a lot of times, you know, I, I, I ask the coach, what can I do to be better? And, you know, if it's simply kicking the ball against the wall, at first, like, I might be like, you know, that's something that's, that's weird. But then, like, you know, it's, it's something that I do and then it's something that has helped me improve. But, you know, like, it, it takes time and, like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And, yeah, definitely, like, playing out the back, I think, it's it's gonna happen because it's the only only position right now that is not being used for like creative purposes, you know. Mm. And I feel mm. like last time it wasn't the right back and left back, but now it's like the fullbacks and next is gonna be a keeper for sure. So definitely, I think it's gonna be something that it's gonna be uh, prevalent and it's something that I probably need to work on a lot, a lot more. Mm. Yeah, it was something that goes into coaching uh, of young goalkeepers as well. You know, being comfortable with the ball at your feet because you're that. Extra man in, in possession almost. Uh, Raihan, I want to come to you because Ricky spoke about, you know, things that he, he perhaps needs to work on. What are some of the things you're looking at, you know, uh, in terms of working on and trying to develop your game so that you can push yourself to that, to that next level? So, like, overall, I want to improve overall because I know I'm not, like, a finished product yet. I still have a long way to go. I still have uh, higher aspirations, you know, for the future. So, I would lo- love to improve overall. But also, I, I would love to... Uh, one thing that I would like pinpoint as one thing I would like to improve is my crossing because I want to get more assists for the next season. I help the team in goal contributions. The one way I can do that, especially with like Ilhan up top, his heading is one of the best in the league. I think if I improve my crossing, we can get a lot more goals. Mm. So for people that are kind of just tuning in for, for the first time, right? We've spoken about what you guys are looking to work on. Tell us a bit about your, your strengths. You know, what do you bring to your respective teams? Ricky, why don't we start with you and then we'll go to Ryan. Uh, for me, I personally feel like my key strength is, you know, my height. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like with my height, I, I'm able to do more than maybe like, like be able to reach certain shots that maybe some keepers won't be able to. And especially, I just love like the high balls, crosses, anything that gets inside the box. I just love like picking them off, especially like, uh, just learning, just picking the balls off. And I think that one of the my key strengths as well is like communication. Just talking to my uh, center backs. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind being loud and telling mm. my center backs off sometimes. Even though I might, you know, some of them might be seniors, but, you know, I, I have to tell them off if, if, if they're not doing something right. And yeah. so just like taking high balls, communicating, and, you know, just trying to have that motivation and drive to not be satisfied just being number two or number three. Mm. Just trying to be in the number one spot. So I guess those are my three key strengths, I feel. Just my man mm. coming out of the box and, you know, my hands as well as just my communication. So, yeah. Mm. And hey, what about you, Ryan? I think one of my strengths that not many people know is, like, my one-on-one defending. Because I think I was um, the top in the league for tackles and I had, like, 80% tackle 
like success rate, which is like quite high. So yeah, that's one of my biggest strengths. And also obviously my my heart, like my like work rate to be able to like make those runs and keep doing them. So yeah, those are my two strengths, I believe. Feels like a job interview with both of them lining up their strengths and uh, weaknesses. But guys, just quickly touching on it, Ricky, I'll come to you first. In the global game, do you have any role models or idols you look up to? Role models, yeah. Uh... Uh, to be honest, like I'm not trying to like be that guy, but like when, like growing up, I was like really like uh, looking up to Hassan Sunny. I'm not okay. really here. and and like just look at him. And I remember when I trained with him the first day because I, I was with Sailors last year. Yeah, and training with him, I was <laughs> it was like crazy. I remember I like came in and uh, I like act as if you know everything was cool. You know, like I was like, <laughs> I was like definitely I was like. Okay, and then we get into the hands, and I'm like, like looking at him, and he's catching the ball, and I'm like, oh my god, like that's, that's my guy. like, that's like, like that's who I look up to, you know. And then afterwards, after training, you know, uh, I like, I think I might have told him, I was like, this is just crazy that you he gave me some advice, like, are you doing well and stuff like that. And I told him, like, when I was young, I used to like, you know, like watch you a lot. I said it like watch you a lot, but he doesn't know that I like it's fine, like look up to him. <laughs> he and does then know. He me, and then he gave me a pair of gloves. He gave me a pair of gloves. Then I remember I sent it to like the group chat, like the no, like me and my boys group chat, like Raihan. And I was like, "What's wrong with you, man? Like, why are you flamboyant with it over your teammate?" I'm like, "I'm not like it's just that you know, it's just, like someone on the role model." And like I felt like being able to train with them was just like such a such a like you know good thing. But if you're like talking as well, like um like professional footballers, like I've been looking into Edward Mendy. I think mm. like the story that that it goes to, you know, I feel like. Not only is it like good goalkeeper, it's just that the story, you know, the story behind it is, yeah. is something I look up to as well. Yeah. Those are probably two, you know. F- fascinating right. because it reminds me of, sorry, Rausha, it reminds me of Anu talking about how he Harris. was a big fan of Harris, <laughs> right? Remember that, Rausha? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's interesting to see that it's not just me, a fan feels that way, right? Even players in the fraternity feel that way about certain players. Yeah. It's crazy because like even sometimes like, uh, I think the other day I was at under 23 and I think just before uh, we will. We had a friendly against Sailors, and I remember I was just like walking, and Hassan was like, "Hey, Ricky!" I'm like, <laughs> <"How is it?" laughs> and sometimes, he, sometimes he replies to my stories and comments on my posts, and I'm like, oh, "At this point, Raihan is like, read it in, bro, read it in." Raihan, <laughs> who's who's your idol, bro? Like when I was growing up, and I'm being a Liverpool fan, uh, Steven Gerrard was one of the my idols, and as well as that, for some weird reason, I really like Dirk Coy. So. <laughs> Like, yeah, he was my, my biggest idol growing up, Dirk Coit, for some reason. Oh, wow. I just really liked him as a player. And uh, any local players that excite you? Um, I mean, when I first came to TAM, I was also like, because uh, I, I was signed to the Japanese SPL 18, mm. and all the players there, they had like a lot of big players, Daniel Bennett, Mustafic. I was like very like starstruck by these guys. Uh, Kyro Amri up front as well. Like all these guys with over 100 caps for Singapore. Like loads of caps, so yeah, they, these guys were the guys that I like, looked up to when I was like as well when I was younger. So, Brilliant, man! Brilliant to hear all this stuff from uh, coming from you guys. I mean, Raihan, I just wanted to get your your, your thoughts on on a couple of other things. Actually, you know, you've grown up in, in a few different places. I know you played in uh, uh, in Dubai. You grew up there in Finland as well. How, how have these experiences sort of helped you adjust to different uh, cultures and? and societies and do you think this has sort of had an impact on how you've grown and developed as a person and a player um yeah i believe these uh places like help me grow as a person because you get to experience like a lot of different cultures a lot of different people like different styles of management different like way people work with each other so yeah it it helps you grow as a person and you really get to like find yourself and know what you're like good at and like in Finland, there's loads of different weather. There's like spring, summer, mm. winter even. Sometimes I'm playing in like two inches of like uh, wow. snow and your like legs are freezing off. But you have to like keep going and, you know, persevere. And also in Dubai, you're playing in like 40 degree weather mm. in the desert mm. and it's boiling and you just have to keep rehydrating. Or like, and there's many times I've been dehydrated in Dubai and like, <laughs> it's like, yeah. So it was a good experience. I mean, like, I'm lucky to, to have experienced these kind of, like, things, you know. Not many people get to, like, live in, like, many different countries. So it's, like, uh, grateful for my parents, like, mm. to be able to. And, like, if I go in as well, like, I think, uh, like, I know, like, when I was with Ryan, uh, you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, one of the things that, like, because it was also the culture. Uh, like, he, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know, but I used to live in America as well. 
Yeah. Like I remember, like me and Rahan, like uh, we had we when we went to the locker room. I guess like we were a bit like uh, over. Uh, I guess we talked a lot. I mean, like we talked. <laughs> And I guess it's, that's just like the culture change, you know. When, like, yeah. I used to live in America, like it was like it's it's something that you could you could talk out, you could speak out, and sometimes like when you feel like something's not right, like you speak out. But okay, yeah. it's like if you're a youngster, you just shut up and you just play. Mm, yeah. Mm. I remember me and Ryan, we were like thinking about it. We we're like, man, like that's not fair and that's not this. But at the end of the day, like you just learn through it, and I guess that's what you you do. Oh man, you I, I'm with you guys. You know, I'm with you guys in the sense that I, I feel like sometimes here it's a society where you know, oh, it's all about respecting your elders and not mm, saying anything mm. or not picking things out when you think, you know, something is wrong. You know, you can be a young person and still speak out. You know, I, I completely understand that and completely encourage that. So it's great to hear that from, from you guys as well. And I grew up in Singapore all my life. So, you know, I guess we, we all come in with uh, sort of different experiences and try to bring that, uh, bring that to the play. Right. Yeah, I actually yeah. didn't realize that Ricky grew up in America. So again, it's interesting to find out about the different cultures that come into the league, right? Ryan, I'll stick with you for the next question. We're looking ahead to the 2022 Singapore Premier League season, right? So it's another season at the Young Lions for you. What are your targets? Because last year, I, I dare say the Young Lions caught a few people's eye with their performances. What are the targets on a personal level first for yourself? Um, on a personal level, um, I would like to obviously get more like contributions towards the goals of the team like because goals help win games. So if I, if I can help contribute with the goals, we can win more games. So yeah, so get more goals and assists for the team and then personally also perform well so I can get called up for the national team. Um, yeah. So those are my personal goals. And I think for a while overall, we would just want to keep, keep our performances there and get, get results as well. Not, not just uh, have good performances, but the results that to match it as well. Cause we had like some really good performances last year. I remember against Alberex, the coach was saying we, we were like playing really well. And against like Lion City Sailors, we were scoring against them and playing really well there. So I believe we can, if we continue the momentum from last year, we can definitely get some results and hopefully we can like finish mid-table. Mm. Yeah, I think what's interesting for me is to see the different sort of coaches and, and the styles. Um, Ricky, what, you're having a smile there when Ryan was talking about <laughs> finishing mid-table. What, what was that about? No, no, Go no. on. No, I remember like in Cambodia, me and him were talking about uh, yeah. uh, like... I don't know if I should be saying this. I mean, like, talking about, like, each other teams, you know? Like, I was like, if, like, Bowser finished above you, like, wouldn't we be better than you? Then Ryan's like, we beat you twice last year. And like, the whole, like, argument whether who was, like, the better team, like, Bowser or Young Lions. But I don't want to get into that. So. No, you should get into that, man. That's what the league needs. We need more exactly. of this rivalry oh. stuff. We need more of this. People are too safe. People are always like, uh, yeah, we'll see what we can do. But, you know, the other team is also a good team. Man. Go on, man. You want to be honest, I think I have a lot of like, like, you better watch out. You better watch out. I'm just saying, you better watch out. I'm just saying, let's not be watching about this, right? I mean, any chance, any chance both of you want to put a wager out on this podcast before the first uh, Young Lions Ballastia game? (laughs) I'm going, Ryan. You tell me. (laughs) We'll just see. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. I have, I have a lot of biasness towards my club, so I just told him, like, you know, we're, we're, we're going to finish above you and all this other stuff. But he, uh, he was like, oh, y'all, y'all not good. Y'all yeah. do this. Y'all do that. <laughs> so even him, not only him, because I was an under 23. So all of them That's were right. Guys. So it was like yeah. eight versus one. So yeah. I was like, I was on. Was, brilliant, like, right brilliant. Hand, right hand, yeah, you yeah. touched on it there. The, the, the aims for this season, personally, as well as as a team. And you talked about keeping up with the playing style from last year, but there has been a coaching change going into 2022, right? No more Philip or as Nasri Nasir has come in. How is it different in terms of approach, tactics, man management? How is it different, Nasri's style? I think uh, Coach Nasri is also trying to play the same like playing style because it's a national philosophy, you know? We want to play good football. So yeah, I think Coach Nasri also wants to continue what we did last year. Obviously, there's going to be a few changes, but... Uh, overall, we want to keep playing good football, um, attractive football, uh, high pressure, you know, high pressing, possession based football. And, um, but the differences in management, I think um, Coach Nazri, they're both very good, like what, both two of the like, really good managers I've worked with and coaches. But I think Coach Nazri is more like uh, man management. He likes to pull players aside, talk to them individually, you know, like talk to them about like what they can do, what they can improve, like individually and like. Yeah. And then Coach Philip is like very tactical and it's um we always do a lot of tactical work in training. But I think yeah, those are the main differences between the two. 
Interesting. Uh, sorry, just final question to Raihan Ray- uh, here. Ricky, we haven't forgotten about you. I promise we'll talk about Ballester right after this. Raihan, you touched on it earlier between the banter between Ricky and you in terms of rivalry and then Roshan said that's what the league needs. We've seen rivalry between you and the Geelang fans last year. <laughs> Can we expect more fireworks this year? I think there's going to be uh, definitely more fireworks. Like, to be honest, I'm quite talkative on the pitch. Like, a lot of players don't like playing against me or like um, playing like because I, like, say a lot of, like, stuff on the pitch, like... Yeah. But I don't say anything bad. I just say, like, when they make a mistake, I'm just like, well done, keep that going, like, keep <laughs> <doing> that, you <laughs> know? <laughs> like, and, like, stuff like that, you know? It's just lighthearted stuff. A lot of players get annoyed by it, but, you know, if they get annoyed, they don't play their best, so it helps the team. But, yeah, you know, yeah with Geylang, I think their, their fans just, like, didn't really like me, but, you know, it's all, it's all part of the game, you know? The banter between fans and... And players, yeah. Oh, I, I, I love it. I love a Maldi player because I, I used to be like that as well. And with Gelang, and we used to have no Ali, or we had no Ali on the show, and he will tell you all about the times when we used to curse and swear at each other. And again, as one of those things where I was a younger player and he was an older guy, right? And he, he, he'd say all kinds of stuff, and I'd be like, just yeah, yeah, you're old and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I love it. <laughs> league, league needs, league needs more of that, man. I used to fight with ID Iskandar and all that on, on the pitch yeah. as well. So it, 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 it was excellent. So this is the kind of stuff that I think you know really keeps it interesting and keeps it going. Ricky, let's let's go with you now. You know, you made an interesting move for me. You went to Ballester. Um, and you know, I think competition for the number one spot is going to be quite fierce, right? They've also got uh, Rudy in there, Hyrule has also come in into the club. How, how do you see that going for you? Um, yeah, I mean, those are like two like great goalkeepers. I mean, <clears throat> I think the goalkeeper union is like fantastic. I think we have one of the best goalkeeper unions uh, with Rudy and Harrow. Uh, in terms of like how it is for me, I mean, of course, we're, we're, we're a union, but we're all trying to fight for the number one spot. And then they're like, you know, I'll, I'll never be like satisfied just being like number uh, second choice or, you know, with third choice. So they're great competition. They're great people. They're great friends. They're great characters. But I'm trying to fight that number one spot, and mm. that's how it is. And it's it's something that you know I I asked the coach what can I do you know to to fight and do all this. And like I'm just learning. And of course I'm I'm, I'm still young. You know compared to them, they're the you know they probably have na- they have national team caps. I'm still yep. a young boy, so I don't want to push my limits. But at the same time, I'm I'm there to to get, I'm behind them. You know I'm trying to get them. I'm trying to get their spot. Yeah. The nibble yeah. Them. yeah. Yeah, I think what was interesting for me was last year when you came in and it was you came in under difficult circumstances, right? Zyful had, had left the club um, and, and you came in and the pressure was immediately on. I think the first game that you played was against Stampanese, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I thought you, you did really well. Um, do you see, you know, perhaps maybe not being given enough game time, giving enough an opportunity uh, this season as something that could hold you back? Or do you see it more as a, a learning experience and something for the longer term? Yeah, you know, I, like I said last year, uh, like last year it was, it was such a great, great time for me i mean yeah of course like the circumstances was bad but in order like having like the boss believe in me as well to put me and start me and like it was like the first time coming in my career where i was in a professional club and they, they trusted me you know and i i, I hope that i repaid my trust and we got a few wins we got clean sheets and managed to go up and after that like you're kind of you're kind of cloud nine you feel like i i'm capable in this league i can, yeah. I can prove myself i'm even though i'm young i can keep a clean sheet i could win I could, you know, get like team of the weeks on like some Instagram post, you know. So of course this year, you know, there's there's more there's more competition. Last year Zaifu was out, so it was only me and and Mark, is that Curly Long and Martin Moon. Yeah. But like with this year, we got like Rudy, who's a national team keeper, uh, like who is national in Hyrule, you know, with all the previous national team and Geelong number one. I'm trying to get my spot, and of course if I don't have game time, it's gonna be tough. But at the same time, everybody in the team has to play their role, and if that means that. I need to sit down in order for the team to win, even though I personally don't feel like, I feel like I can help. But if that's what the coach feels, then that's what the coach feels. And mm. at the end of the day, I can talk to him and see like, how can I help? But mm. like one thing that coach Akbar uh, stresses on is that everybody got to know the role. So if we see that next week, Rudy is going to start or Hyrule is going to start, that whole week, me and Hyrule, we're just pushing Rudy and we're helping him to be better. And yeah. when next week, if I start, you know, and they're pushing me and they're helping me grow. So at the end of the day, if I don't get any game time this year, it's, it's going to be tough. But I hope that, you know, I can show my worth because, you know, I feel like I can do it and I'm capable. Yeah. So, yeah. You, you touched on it there, Akba, his management style. A lot has changed since last year to this year for Ballester. What is it about this new Ballester that the rest of the league should be afraid of? You know, I don't want to put in too much high hopes. I mean, I know Russia just said, like, not to do that. Like, you know, me, <laughs> don't be all, 
but you know to be honest like i feel like this year and last year it's 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 a whole different thing because i remember last year you know it's to, this year is a whole different thing we're investing a lot into trading and stuff like this and and everybody's kind of into it like you could tell you could tell by a training ground everybody's trying to push each other everybody's uh young like the young ones are like pushing the big one uh the seniors and there's a lot of, even like a lot of fights and training as well trying to fight each other and push I'm saying I, I think this year we might we might be able to do something. I know last year I think it's the right hand. I told him last year we got some good players. We might do a little something. I'll tell you, we, we, we can do a little something. I really believe in our team, man. If everybody plays their role, I think we could we could be like serious underdogs in here. And I think we could go really far. With it's, it's just everything's good. Good fitness coach, good uh, head coach, good assistant coach. It's just a great balance in the whole team. Yeah. Okay, well, we're expecting big things, you know, now that you've bigged up the, the club, you know. <laughs> I mean, great result. Great result on, on, on match day one, coming back against, uh, against Tampanese. So, you know, things are, things are looking encouraging. Listen, Raihan, Ricky, this is a question for both of you guys, but we'll go with, with Raihan first since he's been a little bit quiet there. Uh, <laughs> what are the plans for, you know, your respective careers? What kind of steps do you think you need to take to sort of meet those targets, Raihan? So, my, my main goal is to go overseas and play in Europe. So... Overall, uh, overall, I just need to keep improving every year. Like keep keep working, put, putting the work in, um, keep improving. So I believe I'm 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 gonna go there some someday after NS. So yeah, I think I'm on target maybe. But we'll have to just wait and see. Just keep improving every year. Keep putting the hard work. You know, I've been doing a lot of stuff outside of training as well. Like I'm just like, you know, putting the hard work. I think hard work will pay off in the end. I, I, I kind of like to ask young players this, right? When you when you see your career, do you kind of have a progression plan in your own mind that you call it kind of go like, okay, I'll play maybe two, three years in the SPL and then I see myself going to Thailand or maybe trying uh, going for trials in Japan and things like that and then eventually maybe trying out your... Do you have like a progression plan in your mind, for example? For me, I think after NS, I want to just uh, trial in Europe, like straight away. Like, straight I don't, away, okay. Because I feel that you know, when you're young, it's it's better for you in Europe. Like when you're older, teams might be a bit more uh, like cautious and not want to go for you because you've been in Asia for too long. I mean, it's like these European clubs, they like don't know much about Asia. So they it's as long as you're younger, it's more likely they'll they'll see you. So for for me, I want to go there as soon as possible. So after I already I want to go there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Ricky, what about yourself? um yeah you know for me it's it's like i always have the goal i want to be the best you know i want to be the best goalkeeper you know and i just hope that one day i can make it and you know right now i hope i'm taking the like small baby steps there you know starting with the under 23 and hopefully this year's sea games and asian games at the end of the year you know and after after i uh finish ns like i definitely want to go overseas it's something that i definitely want to do and you know follow like hassan you know like robo like follow his steps the role model a little bit you know and you know right now I, she's definitely for me personally, I feel like he's the best goalkeeper that Singapore ever had, you know. And I definitely want to. Is that something I want to achieve for to be the best goalkeeper in Singapore as well? Which, personally, for me, like I believe in myself and I know that I can do it. But yeah, do you have goalkeeper. European? Do you have European dreams like Raihan, for example? I mean, I, to be honest, I, I I really want to play in uh in Indonesia or Japan. Uh, hmm. I used to live in Indonesia for eight years, and like. The, the atmosphere there is, is crazy. I just know that sometimes when you're like in your, in your house and like you just share like whole jam and police and like shouting and it's really just the fans. <laughs> I know Japan as well. My dad, he, he, um, he, he, he's a big football supporter and it's like, mm. I know how it's like over there and the hard work that they all put in. So mm. like these two places are places that I would love to just like play at. It would be a dream. Yeah. Uh, that's so refreshing to hear that both of you harbor such great hopes to play abroad, right? Because I feel the generation before perhaps did not achieve those on a global stage. And I'm sure Iksan is listening in and Agent X will be uh, getting a call at some point to sort both of sort you things out. out just huh? very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Just very quickly. Uh, I know we talked about progression and playing abroad and stuff like that. But in Singapore, in the past few months, we've seen five-year contracts being given out to younger players. I just want to speak to both of you about this because you do fall in the category of younger players, right? What are your thoughts in terms of career security, stability when a club is giving out five-year contracts, right? And perhaps coming to you first. I think there's there's good things and there's like negatives to it as well because it's good for the players. They, they've got security for the next five years. They've got a contract. They can get paid in like weekend. But then if you want to leave the club, it'll be like harder, you know, like mm. 
Um, in the past, usually it's one year contracts. And let's say you have a really good season, you can go to next club for higher pay as well. And yeah, but I think overall, it's good to see in the local uh, scene that like clubs like companies are giving five year contracts to young players. And hopefully, like more clubs can follow suit. And yeah, I think it's overall a good thing to happen to the league. Ricky? Uh, yeah, I mean, like you can tell that the Singapore like league is like going back up and like people are, like you can tell by sailors and the way that Tampanese is offering five year contracts. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I think that five year contracts is all about like your how, how much you believe in yourself, you know, kind of like the NBA, you know, like you get a guaranteed contract or you better go to free agency, you know, and mm. it's like it's sometimes it's a hit or miss. So it's really it's really you got to make that decision yourself, whether with your family or something like that. Yeah, guys, uh, it's been great chatting with you all. And we're starting to run out of time a little bit. But I think we should go into AFF Under-23 Championships just for a bit because otherwise I think our, our listeners might, might get a little bit disappointed that we didn't, we didn't touch on that. Now, I mean, a, a competition like this, right? I know it was, for me, observing from the outside, it was like bizarre circumstances with COVID and how it affected the entire competition, not just you guys. Uh, but under normal circumstances, how important is a competition like this for, for young players like, like yourselves? Right. Um, I think it's very important because it's an international tournament. There's a lot more eyes on it than the SPL. You know, there's other countries. There's probably scouts watching it as well. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's very important for young players, especially like if you perform well, this could like make or like break your career. Like it could change your career a lot. So yeah, I think it's uh, very important to have these competitions. And yeah, I think uh, it helps young players to have these competitions as well. Mm, mm. And I, I mean, again, it was it was a pretty sort of bizarre competition with all the disruptions, the COVID, the injuries, and the issues that that uh, you guys had. Uh, Ricky, what was the the mood like in the camp, and how did you guys try to sort of get through it together? Uh, yeah, you know, to be honest, like the mood was like kind of like both, like we're kind of like sad, but at the same time we were both motivated. You know, like mm. obviously we were sad that you know the second game we lost our captain Jacob. Uh, and like we only had two goalkeepers on the bench and one outfield player, it was it was tough. But at the end of the day, I remember we were all the day before, like T minus two minus one of game day, we were all motivated during stretching in the pool, during uh, activation. We were just motivating each other, and you could just tell that the camp was all good, even though through all the hardship that we had. And definitely, that was that was a good camp. And personally, for me, like it was it was an emotional moment for me, just like getting called up and just mm. going there. Like you mentioned, like how is it like for development of young players? Like for me. Like getting is it's emotional, you know, just like going to to represent your country and you know having the flag and and the national anthem goes off and I think I cried a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, like because it, it's just like it's just like you feel like you feel proud, you know? Yeah, yeah. proud and passionate. So and, yeah. and you you mentioned it there, just having three players on the bench, right? You were one of the goalkeepers of them. Were you ready to play as a striker if needed? Uh, uh, I'll. I'll, I'll do anything. <laughs> I'll do anything, anything to do. Don't make be like the kid, man. I'll, I'll go there. You know, I have to pick somebody out for the stretch. I would. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we, we saw actually Vietnam having to play uh, the goalkeeper as a, as a forward. I think it was the semi final against. Uh, well, I can't remember who it was against Timor Leste. I think it was, mm. and they mm. put their goalkeeper on uh, uh, up front. So I was a bit disappointed we didn't get to see Ricky up, uh, up top for them playing as a target man. Right. But you know, we were, we, at that point, I think we were down quite a bit, and I don't think yeah. it would have been a good image putting on a yeah. goalkeeper on. <laughs> yeah. So I think like you gotta respect the coach's decision and they, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky, to- Ricky always tells me that he can he can play up front and score goals in the SPL. <laughs> he always says that if you put me up front, I'll score some goals. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's uh, that's a, that's another route for you in, in the, into the Belize starting eleven. Uh, hope, <laughs> exactly, Alba. If you're, you're listening, it. you know you got a guy who can. I don't know, know Allison thing a little header, you know. Just, yeah. <laughs> you, you already said you know your strength is in the air. You know you got good height, so you could yeah. you could do it. Um, <laughs> right, guys. You you all were placed in a really tough group up against Thailand and and against Vietnam, and and they sent in sort of. Underage squads, in a sense, Thailand sent in their under 19s, Vietnam sent in pretty much their 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 under 21s, and both these sides went on to 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 the final. I mean, great for them, but it's kind of scary for 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 teams in the rest of the region. What was it like to play against these two sides uh, in the group stages? Ryan, we'll go with you because you featured in both those matches. I think yeah, they were they were really good opponents. You know, they were um very technical, like technically good, and also tactically very uh, good as well. Uh, so it was it's tough and also yeah they're under they're like underage as well but 
as well they, they had some players who were like 22 as well yeah, yeah, but yeah. like majority of them were underage so yeah they were very good for the age and i think if we had our full squad we we could have done a lot better but i mean there's no excuses we lost in both games and yeah it, 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 it's scary to see that there's like this, this level already in, in southeast asia and i think yeah it's, it's good for football in southeast asia because like they're their, their both teams are very, 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 very good. Like, yeah. I think both of you touched on it earlier about learning from this experience, right? Despite the results and stuff like that. So I'm going to skip ahead to the final question, which is SEA Games up next on the international front. Based on this experience in your career, Taswa, you must be looking forward to that. Ricky, perhaps we start with you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm to like super excited about it. And like, <clears throat> if, the, if the opportunity comes and they call me up, like it's something that I would definitely be like insanely proud of and my whole family and everybody just like supporting me and my mom, especially. And not only that, just uh, like a bunch of coaches as well. Like uh, it's just like, it's just something that I really definitely want to do and something I want to be part of. And it'll be something I'm super excited about. And yeah, Ryan, Ryan, what about you? We, we expect you to be one of the key players in that squad. Um, yeah, obviously if I get called up, it would be a great honor. And yeah, I would give 100% for the national every time I get called up for a national team age group or full. So, yeah. And this would be my second SEA Games as well. Last time out was a good experience. You know, I learned a lot. Um, it was, the, that SEA Games was also my first ever, like, call up, like, tournament for the national team and at any age group. So, yeah, SEA Games will always, like, have a special place in my, my heart. And yeah, it's always, a, it's such a big event as well. There's not just football, all these athletes from all these different countries. It's, it's a very big spectacle. So, yeah, I think, it's a it's a, a good showcase for Singapore football if we perform well and I think we can we can go far and hopefully we can get gold. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I, I hope you guys are able to 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 get into the squad and I hope Singapore can put its, its best foot forward and it won't have any issues that it experienced at the AFF under twenty threes. Listen, it's been great chatting with you guys. Just one final question from me, right? Who's gonna finish higher, Ballester or the Young Lions? YL, YL, Young Lions. <laughs> right, definitely Ballester, definitely Ballester. Definitely Ballester, yeah? Definitely Ballester. Okay, okay. We'll try and get you all on again at, at the end of the season and see how, how it goes. I'll score a few goals against you, Ricky, if you play. <laughs> <laughs> he likes it. He likes, this is what he does. He likes to talk a lot, you know? But that's, there's nothing. There's nothing at the end. There's no social. He talks a lot, but there's no social. Ricky, Raihan, I must say, both of you have lived up to the billing. Iksan bigged you guys up and said, we need to get you on the pod. Rosh and I are so glad we went out and got the both of you on the pod. You've yeah. delivered so much anecdotes as well as insight into the career of footballers, young footballers in Singapore, and we've enjoyed it. Rosh, any closing thoughts? Oh, yeah, yeah. Any, anybody you guys want to you wanna put forward to, to come on the, on the show? Any names you can think of? Feel Love free it. to throw. If, if, you, if I'm putting you on the spot now and you don't have a name in, in, um, in mind, you can always just message us on, on Instagram later, man. But yeah, if, if you got one now, just, just throw it out there. Anybody you'd like to see? Glenn, Glenn Quay, Glenn Quay. Glenn I, think, Quay? I, I got uh, this, this uh, Rory, edge of the box, this guy. He'll bring you a lot of insight on what he feels like uh, from, I think Ryan can agree because this is something that we do with him. Yeah. And he's, he's a guy that came from uh, the UK where he used to be okay. a there. Yeah. And, he, and he's, right now he's the fitness coach. And oh, so he has... He has a lot of insights on what he feels needs to improve in the Singapore system, and okay. what uh, like he, he he's he's pretty open. So I definitely okay. think you should bring him on, and he's a very great like. Okay, okay. okay. great recommendation. Okay. That's all. That's all for me, man, Roshan. And thank you guys so much. All the best in your careers, and and I'll I'll be following, and I'm sure I'll see you guys around. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having us on. You know, having us big, on. we're big fans of the podcast. It's an honor to be up there. Okay, honor, honor. Oh wow, wow, wow! Thank, thank, thank you so much, the, guys. The, the, the honor has been all the Wayang, all the Wayang coming out. <laughs> like, you know, to be on the podcast. These two guys got a great career in front of TV for sure. So much PR in the answers, yet so much insight. <laughs> Boys, it's been excellent having you, listeners, viewers, subscribers. Continue to follow the channel, and we'll continue to deliver the good stuff. Till the next one, we'll see you soon. <laughs>